Oh yeah, heading to catch bait in the cooler straight up yeeted the skipjack rods. Moving us down the channel brake line. So the channel brake line where you've seen in the videos is the super sharp drop off and we're at the bottom end of it. And I'm just going down that brake line down the old Tennessee River bed. Double. Oh, that's a good one. Well, we're gonna begin this episode with another Bill Dance moment, except it wasn't me this time. It's a miracle. Let's just see uh, what we got going on over here. <laughs> oh yeah, heading to catch bait and the cooler straight up yeeted the skipjack rods. Uh, yeah, good stuff. So we had to stop at Big Fish and uh, get a couple new lightning rods. Luckily, they're not super expensive, so. E. And it wasn't me that did it this time. Ding a ling a ling a ling. Skipjack City. Bringing the Skipjack lunch bell so we can catch some bait. <laughs> them skipjack at we just need a few of you to use for bait when you get back after catching bait make sure they are really good and covered in ice we'll probably put another bag of ice on top of these just to keep them cool you do not want your bait to get rotten for big catfish and I would advise clean your cooler out at the end of the night with a little water because you don't want all that nastiness in there you want it as fresh and natural as possible and if you can catch fresh bait before you go fishing immediately, do that. Well, guys, it is a Wednesday morning in the middle of June. And that means it's a hard time to be a cat fisherman. The spawn is on. And I have somehow lost my voice, which is difficult because I'm in sales and I kind of need it. And I make YouTube videos. But hey, come along with Brian and I. We go and catch some spawning time blue catfish in this video we do some control drifting to cover water because during this time of the year catfishing is really really difficult and sometimes you just need to do something to get a bite and this time of the year the numbers game is usually on fire so you can catch tons and tons and tons and tons of fish i've had days out drifting where i've caught three or four hundred pounds of blue cats but the only biggest the biggest ones maybe 20 25 pounds but that's still a blast so that's what we set out to do brian had never been uh drifting before vertical drifting and I was like, bro, even the little two-pounders will straight up slam this rod straight in the water. And I don't think he was expecting them to do that, and they definitely did. So come along with Brian and I and watch us catch some uh, spawn time blue cats and get harassed by the pleasure boaters because that's also what you can expect this time of the year. And it's also a hard time of the year, especially when you're editing a video cooking breakfast and forget you got your bacon on in the oven. You burn the crap out of it. I don't like crispy bacon, and that's burned. But we're about to catch some fish, so come along with us. No, he put it down. Put it down. Oh. Alright guys, we've been out here for like literally five minutes. Down rod. Literally five minutes. We had just gotten all the baits out. I don't know how big of a fish this is. I think he's in this one back here already. Yeah, I can see that. Oh buddy. Well, we are controlled drifting right now here with the trolling motor. And uh, this was on a whole skipjack filleted down the side. and. I'm just bringing it down this big channel break line on the Tennessee River here. And we're just trying to hook up with the toad. And we may have a good one on here. We'll do a tactics description here in a second, but I'm just trying to make sure we don't drag up on this break line because this fish is kind of pulling my little boat over there. You want me to go ahead and get the net? Um, I think I can handle it. Okay. We got bubbles. He's got himself lassoed. Ooh, buddy. Taking some line, boy. 
There he Look is. Look at that lasso fish. Man, he got that other line all messed oh, up. Oh, no. <laughs> he slammed it, though. Even small fish just kill it. Um, my boat flip a 15 pounder. <laughs> that was a mess. <laughs> and a half. Heck yeah. We caught that catfish. So while we caught that catfish, we snagged up on the daggum trot line. An old one that somebody hasn't taken care of. Attached to a piece of rock. Ridiculous. You gonna come out here and do this, clean your stuff up. I don't even know how old that is. Well, the lighting is probably awful from this angle, but we finally got back going after that trot line and got us another blue. Flip them on in here. Yo boink. All right, we gotta release these guys. That's two fish in six minutes of having rods in the water. Well, we, we were just about to film a release video for these two guys. Triple. But they won't let us. Yeah, we ain't gonna they won't let us get it done. Rods back in the water. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> this is summertime fishing for you right here. Like you can catch some <laughs> crazy numbers out here drifting, but you're gonna have a little binker like that get on the line too. <laughs> They all fun though. That's a triple in any book though. <laughs> this is the ones that'll stick you. Be careful with the small ones. All right, we're gonna release these guys again. One at a time. Here's Ryan's fish. Pretty old blue cat. Look at that sucker. Picture perfect. It's perfect. All right. You guys gonna swim right off. There's this guy, a little bit bigger cat. We're trying to get us a 50, 60, 70 out here tonight, but that was the first one. Or at least him. We'll take him. He gone. He gone. All right, we gotta get baits back in the water. We only got two or three baits out now. <laughs> All right, y'all. So now we have had a little bit of time to get our rod set back up in between bites. I'm gonna explain what we're doing. This is called controlled drifting or trolling or, or vertical drifting. So basically what we're doing is, Brian can pan around to the rods here. They are in a lockdown position, sunk directly underneath the boat. And now when we sink them down, we let it hit the bottom and reel them three to four feet off the bottom. And what I'm doing, I'm just taking this trolling motor and I am moving us down the channel brake line. So the channel brake line where you've seen in the videos is the super sharp drop off and we're at the bottom end of it. And I'm just going down that brake line, down the old Tennessee River bed. And we're right where two rivers converge. And there's all this intermixing of nutrients and all this other stuff. So when you have something like that or where a creek comes in or really anything like that, those are great areas to fish. And Brian can pan around. It's just a beautiful evening out here. We've already caught five fish, something like that. And uh, we uh, are going to try to get on a piggy before it gets too dark. All right, so I have purchased a mic, and I am going to now use that to show you what a channel brake line is if you don't know what that is or you don't know what a brake line is in general. A brake line is a decrease in depth on the bottom of the lake. The, how the lake is formed on the bottom, the drop-offs, the ledges, stuff like that is called topography. So what Brian and I are fishing here is the main river ledge, and those are the same everywhere. They look the same. So I'm just going to pick a random lake here. We'll do, uh, I'm in Knoxville, so we'll do Fort Loudon Lake. And we're just going to pull up an area with the main channel ledge. Okay, so here's the main Tennessee Riverbed. You can see it highlighted right there. That's what we're looking at. So this is the old river channel. When they flooded the this area with the dam, this was all farmland and stuff. So this is the old river that ran through here. Now, Brian and I are drifting on an outside bend. Now, an outside bend in the river is where it cuts out like this. 
So on this side where it cuts out, that's where the most current comes by. So the drop-offs are steeper. You can see where these contour lines come really close together over here. So it drops really quick, quickly as opposed to over here. Now, sometimes the fish, especially after they spawn, are going to be up on these shallower areas. But right now we're targeting this deeper stretches right here. So what Brian and I are doing here is just vertical drifting like I just discussed straight down the bottom end of this break line. So right where it drops into the main channel, the deepest portion right here. Now we're just coming down this break line at about 0.5 to 0.75 on the speed. Catfish, you want to go a little bit slower, but if you're trolling something like this for striper, muskie, or bass, or anything like that, you'll be a little bit faster. But catfish like a little bit of a slower movement. So that's what we're doing, just drifting our baits down this ledge. And then you can go all up and down these type of things, and you'll run into schools of catfish. And whenever you run into a school, you can hit a spot lock button, which anchors you right where you're at, and catch a few. So that's just what we're doing is covering some water. And you can do this anywhere throughout the country for channel cats, blue cats, even flatheads. Flatheads will eat drifted cut bait, and sometimes you can drift some live bait. And the blue cats will hit that too. But that's what we're doing here in this video. I believe he dropped it. He dropped it. Straighten that motor up back there. No. Dinking that piece to death. Nope. Yeah, real fast. Got him. There you go. Get him up out of that holder. Oh, you pulled him. Reeled up. Boy, how many times have you been fishing with me? Put your hand right there. We ain't on the rookie show. Eh, no bait. I'll do it. No bait. Come on. Oh, I can't get it out of the holder. Get that rod tip. Oh, buddy, he smashed it. Whew. That's a good one, boy. He's in this line right here, but that's okay. We're snagged up back there. Oh, buddy, we just gotta ease him up out of this deep water. You don't want to give them the bends in the summer. Whoa. He's trying to take some line. Oh, buddy. You know, you want to ease him up and let him burp. There's one. Oh, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked. Oh. Man, they sure hit it hard when you're doing this downline stuff. They don't fool around. Oh, buddy. Get wet. <laughs> it's your job. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to watch the snag lines. <laughs> We're getting kind of bendy over there. All right. There we go. Man, he snagged everything up, didn't he? <laughs> they like doing that. It's been the theme in that. That's a fish. That's a fish. Back ride. back blue rod and here's this one nice little tennessee river blue cat how does the lighting look can you actually see it yeah you can see cool Let's see ya all right what? double oh that's a good one <laughs> oh 
Here you go, Brian. <laughs> oh gosh. <no. laughs> Trade. All right, you got him. I got him. <laughs> oh, the boy learned how to use a reel now. I, I corrected myself. Man, he slammed it. I told you that one was getting dinked on. <laughs> it went down. There he is. Oh, there's a decent one. There we go. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big old toady boy. Let's see if we can get in that. That is on the fish finder rig. Got him. All right. All right. Here. Hand off. <laughs> There's a 20-something. All right. Nice. Yeah, that boy smacked it. All right. We got two rods in the water now. <laughs> We're really having trouble keeping them down tonight. <laughs> Between the snags and the constant fish. Was that number five for tonight? Five or six. Yeah, nice. buddy. Let's see him. Let's see him. We gotta see him first. All right, home sideways. There we go. We got us a good fish there in the the confusion and madness of getting snagged <laughs> up while drifting with uh, no depth finder because we left it at home. All right, let's get this guy back. Let's on. release him. That's a good good spawn blue cat. We are in the middle of the spawn right now. He just tore you up. He don't know he's released yet. Cool looking fish, boy. Oh, it's focusing on my finger there. <laughs> yeah, push him straight down. He'll go. Yep. Off he goes. See you later, dude. Okay. Well, let's get back at it. It's starting to get dark, and there's finally no people on the water and no barges. So, we're going to get to fishing again. Well, y'all, that's going to be the end of that video. Uh, about 20 minutes later, a big lightning front or storm started rolling in, and it, it started to get a little hairy. The hand, the hair on the back of our neck started to stand up, and I, I like the fish right until the front comes in, but once something like that starts happening, you can feel the electricity in the air, you got to get out of there. Uh, I've almost learned my lesson the hard way a couple of times, and I don't plan on actually learning it uh, in any time in the future. So... Um, I don't care if it rains or it's windy to a point, uh, but I don't play around with lightning, y'all. But Brian and I caught some good fish. He caught his first ever drifting fish, and man, the way those guys hit it, even the, the decent ones, just they obliterated on a down rod. A big 50 or 60 pounder, you can't even get it out of the holder for about 10 seconds while it's pulling line. So use the tips and tricks and tactics I discussed with you. You can uh, rewind back to where I'm talking about the, the break lines and how to fish it when you're out on the water, just to give you an example. And, um, you know, I would target the upper end of the rivers right now because they're going to have a little bit more current and that'll help you out. But, um, you know, just get out there and fish and experiment, cover water during this time of the year. If there's no current, this is an especially good way to fish because you can cover more water and the fish are more spread out. So give it a go, catch some big fish, Send us some DMs with your big fish on our Facebook page, and I hope you guys had a good time coming along with Brian and I and our shenanigans and our Bill Dance moments, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for being a part of the Top Knox Fishing Gang.